So uh, friends, uh, welcome to the, the mega webinar platform uh, named as the Saturday Manufacturing Talks. And we are organizing this webinar series uh, since March uh, 2021. So today is the 35th week, uh, November 6, and we are planning to take it forward till uh, 52 weeks. Now this uh, uh, webinar platform we have uh, created to disseminate knowledge across the various research, you know, the researchers across the various other places. And we are fortunate to have the speakers from, you know, the academia, the industry, and uh, within the country and also the outside the country. So that's a very good, uh, you know, the part of it. And uh, so every Saturday, 30 p.m., we assemble here in the, in the Indian Standard Time, we assemble here and listen to the great speakers. We have covered various areas of manufacturing. Uh, additive manufacturing has already been covered. The uh, robotics, industry 4.0, artificial intelligence, simulations. And today we are very much uh, fortunate to have Dr. Murmu with us. Uh, Dr. Murmu is uh, renowned researcher in the field of uh, the additive manufacturing, uh, speci more specifically about the, the development of the machine. We do have researchers, we know that uh, there are a lot of people working in the field of additive manufacturing, mostly uh, you know the, the process side, but uh, the machine development is a real challenging job. So uh, we are fortunate to have Dr. Moon with us. And uh, so I'm just going to read the bio sketch of Dr. Moon. Dr. Murmu uh, is currently working as the senior principal scientist and head of surface engineering and tribology group. He's also the professor and dean of faculty of engineering sciences, Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research, and Institute of National Importance. His current research interest includes additive and smart manufacturing, graphene composite, ink and lubricants, and graphene ultra capacitor. He received his B in mechanical engineering from uh, IIEST Sipur in 1992. M.E. in Mechanical Engineering from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore in 1994, and Ph.D. in Mechanical Engineering from Indian Institute of Technology, H.U. Baradusi in 2010. He joined as a scientist at CSIS CMERI Durgapur in 2003 and working uh, till that day. Prior to it, he was working as a scientist in CSIR uh, National Aerospace Laboratory, Bangalore. He also worked as a visiting scientist in the University of Arlinger, Germany during 20, 2001 and 2003, and research scholar in Northwestern University, USA during 2011 to 2012. He is recipient of several awards. I'm just naming a few of them. The Vasik Award 2015, National Design Award 2012, CSR Ramon Fellowship 2011, TAD Fellowship 2000, CSR at 70 recognition for developing five axis micro milling machine in 2012. And he's also the recipient of the best MSME, MSEB best paper award in 2014. He has been elected as the fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering in the year 2019. Dr. Murmu has published over 100 research papers in the SCI journals, four book chapters, and has filed seven patents and eight copyrights and design registrations. He is currently serving as Associate Editor, Journal of the Institute of Engineers, India, Series C. Some of his notable contributions include development and co-development of five-axis micro-milling machine, graphene supercapacitor, coil bearing, EHD ink jet printing, graphene lubricant for hot forging and miniature turbine. Dr. Muru has supervised six PhD scholars and several master students. Currently, he's supervising nine PhD scholars. He's a member of Expert Advisory Committee, AMT, Department of Science and Technology, and Lubricating Equipment Sectional Committee, PGD-19, Bureau of Indian Standards, Government of India. So you can see that uh, Dr. Muru has got a vast experience in the field of the machine development. So I request uh, Dr. Muru to start, uh, you know, the yeah. Can you fast experience? Can you to see the presentation. 
So Ananta or uh, Prabhanjan, please give uh, Dr. Mohan the access. Now, can you see this? I think. Yeah, 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 we can see your slide. You can go to the uh, presentation more. Yes. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now, is it okay? Yeah, yeah it's very good. Yeah. And let me also uh, thank uh, Professor Sujaganta Pal to uh, provide me this opportunity. It's an honor and privilege to deliver these lectures on Saturday manufacturing talks. And it's a wonderful event and it's been conducted, I think, uh, for quite over the nine months. And moreover, I congratulate uh, Officer Paul for making, creating some wonderful center of excellence on advanced manufacturing technology. And that's a need of our, and we have the privilege to access the facilities and some of our students are working and it's a wonderful system. Now, today's presentations, I'll be focusing on the metal additive manufacturers. And here, major focus is that uh, so I will be sharing the experience how we develop the metal additive manufacturing system. So, we may not go much of the characters and other things. We'll be focusing on uh, model development experience and what are the things we have bottleneck and uh, been addressed through the system, through the, through the development. Now, before before I go to uh, details, just to for the viewers, for the many of the students, maybe just I'll give you a little uh, brief introductions. The metal additive manufacturing involves the manufacturing techniques that add the metals material to produce the metallic compounds, typically layer by layer. And uh, the substantial growth in this technology is partly given by the opportunity for commercial and partners build bits especially to two major industries. One is the aerospace and the second is the medical, where the uh, weight and uh, other functionalities are more important. And especially the fundamental opportunities we found is that the metal IT manufacturing, especially aerospace, I talk because we are finding a lot of opportunities there. The significant cost and lead time reductions, then of course the lead uh, novel materials and uh, unique design solution can be done. Then mass reduction of components will be highly, highly efficient and lightweight designs and consolidation of multiple parts. So the part of yeah, the uh, just uh, sorry to interrupt you. If you can change the display settings at the top left uh, because it is not coming full screen. Yeah, that's sort of okay. uh, display setting at the top left. Now, yeah, I think now it's okay. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, basically the lot of benefits can be. So by removing the oiling process, so this component that provides a lot of opportunities, especially for additive manufacturers. And you can see a lot of uh, components here, correct uh, shown here. Especially that we found the aerospace component. There is a lot of opportunity to repair the blade. Then of course, uh, medical implants and medical device. And rest of these things are coming out slowly in the market. Now, why before going into the details uh, exactly we we focused on designing and developing the DAD system direct energy deposition systems and let me give uh, briefly what exactly the systems configuration is like uh, generally in uh, powder we will have the gas system powder delivery systems so it should have typically should have the powder delivery systems and the laser beam and we are using the laser deposition system here. So basically the laser beams are there and we have the laser head and of course shielding glass will be there. Then on the other hand, there's a gas resistant powder delivery systems and this will powder basically flows through that and then the nozzle supply and then direct depositions is so melting the uh, flow of metals powder and then melting of that. And of course to quality control like uh, to issue to solve that, so we require some kind of high sensor on now optics, spectrometers, and all these things camera to see these things. So this is overall the systems we require required for these direct energy depositions or typical direct laser depositions. Different names it has been uh, known as. Now, why typically in our case we basically choose to why these depositions. One of the reasons is that uh, main uh, thing we found the opportunity is the development of uh, large component, 
large component along with the better quality. So these two, like two metallurgical bond can be formed, then it is merely the same and low heat uh, input, a I mean, smaller heat affected zone. And it, as a result, what will happen that minimum distortion will be there. And exhausting alloy can be processed. Like there is a scope of developing the different powder, alloy powders, and that novel powder can be utilized. Like as you know, there's right now, most of these uh, additive manufacturing powders are tailored made, which is actually is a, like a foundry casting process or forging process. Now there is a scope for doing that, and this missing kind of machine will provide that opportunity to utilize the exhausting alloy or novel alloy tailor made for the additive manufacturing. Then extended solubility is one of the things on automatic process control and of course minimum processing. Now people just uh, look at these uh, things like 18 of the pumps activity from size is for taken from that. Is that the heat affected zone is very small, it's 0.34 mm and interface is free of that. And that is the reason, primary reason we have chosen for that. Of course, there is a very system right now. One is that uh, popular ones, DAD is very popular and the uh, powder based system is very popular right now. But the, for repair and other purpose, uh, these systems has the uh, capability to do that. Now, if you can do some little feedback control, uh, then why you would want for that? If you go for the little feedback control, nearly next step can be done. Then uh, it is basically the reduce post DAD freezing is there. Better thermal control can be done and also less warping. Distortion, of course, if you can put the feedback control. And this will help a lot in, in this uh, feedback control system. So that is the thing we have gone for that. Now I'm coming back to directly the essential element uh, that we require for developing the direct uh, energy or direct energy equation systems. So essentially we require the four five systems. One is the laser, CAD cam, CNC sensor and metal powder. Of course, laser is one of the important uh, requirement of that. Then, then comes the CAD cam, then CNC, uh, CNC and then sensor metal powder. But now I will try to see that how this can be effective. Now let's look at this uh, full systems, how things work. So um, associated parameters, which will be affecting the system performance and finally the objective functions, which need to be optimized. So if you look at the very carefully, the 3D CAD model. So we start with the 3D CAD model and then go to the slicing and process plan. And slicing process plan, then we come to the laser material deposition systems which consists of the three important parts. One is the energy delivery. Now energy delivery system variables can be power, mode, wavelength, focal positions and power density. So this, this is the few things we need to look at. And then system variable in powder, which is also one of the critical uh, things for the successful development is the powder product. Then injection angle, the nozzle standard distance, nozzle geometry, and carrier gas flow rate. So now all this information we need to take it from the simulation so that some workable system and best design can be done. Then system variables, of course, speed x, y, z, and b, and c directions. Then comes to the powder property, which is one of the important things, especially the uh, physics, uh, physical process and dynamics, especially to understand the main pool dynamics and powder and carrier gas interactions and powder, uh, powder carrier gas and laser interactions. So these are the important things where which, which is the parameter that makes the shape, size, composition of the thermal properties of powder. And on the other end, the powder preheating, overlay, pumper design, powder capture efficiencies and very good temperature. So these are the two, these are the three, the two, three, two parameter factors which Effect the total dynamics. And at the end, what you get is objective function is a deposition profile, surface finish, accuracy, microstructure, and material properties. Now, this is the overall uh, structures, overall parameters that affect the total system development. So, this is based on these systems we started working on that. 
working on the dev system development. Now, first system development uh, we thought is that designing designing of this table. Now, the table why it is so important because the system has to work for the many years. It's not that uh, accuracy will be remain for the time being for certain time and then uh, start deteriorating. So it requires to consistency and performance for the longer duration of time. So one of the things major requirement comes from the flatness of the deposition table. Now flatness of deposition table, uh, so it requires the very high accuracy machining. So there is a, some kind of alignment system has to be done. But again, the alignment to the same time you require if you put the alignment systems, but problem comes that uh, the low deformation we need to again. Another criteria has to be fulfilled, that is the low deformation. But again, that low deformation criteria cannot be satisfied if we put some kind of alignment uh, system there. So that needs to be looked at. That is the important challenge that needs to be solved. Then come the low vibrations. So even we, we cannot make the system very heavy, but at the same time, you need to be uh, keep the vibration quite low. Typically, if you can give uh, 30 hertz and lower. And also there should be some provisions for electrical hardware positions and uh, positions like that. So all these things requirement uh, is more of conflicting requirements. And although we sometimes uh, neglect this because this is, but this is one of the important uh, requirement of system development. The reason is that based on that the plates and other uh, thing will come into the, uh, come into the things and overall the overall system degradation or performance degradation will be done due to the wrong choice of the SA. So, of course, a standard uh, we we'll use the ANSYS system. And by ANSYS, we have tried to different uh, fixes. You can see the different beam and column in zigzag way. By this, we have tried to increase this uh, first is to reduce the deformations. So we are trying first uh, target was to reduce the deformation and a minimum deformation should be there under the particular design load. That is the first part. So we have done that first time. Then we have done some kind of modal analysis to see this frequency is uh, close to the uh, 30 Hertz. That is the one of the requirement of the design because uh, that, that will generally interfere with the other uh, systems. So we require to do that. Now, despite doing this design, now we have to see that what are the things required. We require the granite base plate, then granite top support, and then left and right this support, then axis to linear stage, y axis linear axis, and z axis linear axis. Of course, B rotary axis and C tilting axis. Now, here granite is one of the important requirement because of the low thermal expansion which is one of the popular choice but problem is that you require to have the proper surface finish and machining as per the requirement that is one of the things so here we somehow uh, didn't find much of this support in india that was developed and designed that has been fabricated from korea south korea then similarly we have gone for the x axis, y axis, and z axis for part systems. And then, then second things we have uh, tried to see the base and base model analysis. The reason is that here we have chosen, of course, now it is very popular choice. Earlier, like C mount was there, now it is a gantry type design we have selected. The reason was that after selection, after design, we found that the deformation was quite less. So, design was done. As for the James uh, deformation calculations and other that natural frequency. So, by these two calculations, we have tried to configure, try to find out this exact size, width, and also the total base plate size. We have to uh, based on this uh, space ability. Now, second, uh, most things have come. So, you can see this, this is the basically the CAD model has come. Uh, uh, this is the CAD model we have come. This is the systems, already uh, systems are mounted. And then this you can see the Z axis, 
which will be moved here, and this is the laser head, and we will be lodging. This is uh, allowed the powder to flow, and this is X, Y, and Z. Yeah, sorry, X and Y axis, and this is the Z axis. And we the tilting axis is there here also, one tilting axis is there. So, this is the overall systems uh, design we have done that. And of course, there is a, some alignment uh, mechanisms we have come out, which will basically keep it this horizontal. Design. Then, next uh, important thing which came into the or came into the requirement is the laser. So, after a lot of search, we found that the laser was uh, the type laser with continuous wave mode was uh, suitable for us. And we have gone for our requirement was 100 watt. And wavelength based on the materials we have chosen, uh, chosen our requirement is 950 to nanometer to 1000 nanometer. And maximum modulus in frequency 300 to 1000. And beam focus was uh, 500 microns. This was the uh, requirement, of course, based on the little bit cost economics and our requirement both. Then we have gone for the powder feeder system, so two hopper, one liter per inch, and feed range minimum two gram per minute, and maximum 50 gram per minute. And movement we kept 300 by 300, 150, and A axis 45 degree plus minus, and C axis is plus minus 180 degree. And accuracy minimum increment, uh, we kept it uh, one micron. And it did access it was the accuracy was accuracy that of PCM, not accuracy, it is a 15, uh, 50 micron per meter. So this is the basic uh, things we have chosen uh, from design. Now this I'm skipping this is a, so that was one of the requirement was the agglomeration. So we have done some chemical uh, treatment on that. So I'm just skipping that. Now, I coming to the part, or the important part came the coaxial nozzle design. So, at the end, but now question is that this is the standard thing is required that we require CAD model, like the copper tube will be there, cooling jacket will be there, then water for cooling for nozzle, nails and nail, uh, lens positioning space will be there, the gas for uh, lens cooling, channel for the powder delivery. And pulling now, this is the typical uh, nodules, coaxial nodules with that. But thing is that uh, major problem that we started realizing is that the, how do you determine the position position of the systems and how to design that? So we gone back to the numerical simulations. So, numerical simulations, what we did is that first we try to investigate the multiphase flow, the gas and powder to understanding the metal powder flow through the nozzle. So, that is one of the requirements. And second was the investigating the laser material interactions and optimize the process parameter. So, what we did here is that to the model for the powder flow, simulations were there because this is required uh, for our. Uh, nozzle angle determination because nozzle angle has to be determined and for that the 2d model for the powder flow simulation is required and the second issue was that powder flow distribution has to be understood so that 3d can model machine model for powder flow simulation which we have done and from there we are basically trying to get the standard distance for maximum the powder capture efficiency and finally we integrate the powder flow with laser substrate interactions and this basically gave some idea the determination of the clad dimensions and validation of integrated model with the experiments. This is the things basically we are trying to uh, get from the nozzle today. Now we started with the 3D model and mass of the symmetry. So all these parameters like hybrid mass, uh, we have used the CFD affluent and geometry is reduced considered. So we have taken the axial symmetric conditions and all the details are given and this is the typical 15 meter, 15 meter, 15 meter size we have gone. And now major problem came to how to simulate that multi-phase model. So that was the challenge uh, that we tried to solve and get some idea about the basic dimension. 
So what we started doing that for gas, the particle effector was 0.5, and we have determined the mean, uh, mean particle something like a 40 micron, and discrete work model a stopping stick for a particle trajectory was used, and the number diameter, diameter distribution of particle was considered, and surface injection method pedal is considered, and these are the basically simple the simple method for pressure velocity coupling is used. And obviously, as you know, that any of the CFD simulations, we require the mass conservation, then momentum conservation, and turbulent after model, when is KE model was used here, and force balance equations. So, these are the equations, governing equations used in, by using the commercial software field. Uh, we came out some kind of distance, the concentration versus radial positions, uh, some simulated value. And from where we are trying to get the uh, design value for our projects. You can see, we found it, as you can see it here, the concentrations and the real patients vary somewhere 0 0.002. It is a meter, of course, which is given. So, uh, similarly, the real patients here, things uh, are more close to the 0 0.001. So, what is one millimeter? It is uh, something like two millimeters. And then radial positions uh, there. So there is some standard distance, standard uh, distance versus uh, concentration of particle. We got some idea by simulation that uh, what uh, kind of value we need to keep. So we moved on. Then what we did is a second interesting uh, some design of experiment we use that uh, to just to get some optimal value. It is just a parametric study, we did it. It is a process parameters, of course, as you know, it's very, uh, very long. L9 octagonal error was taken that time. And it is powder mass flow rate was taken 5, 10, 15, and carrier gas 5, 7, 5, 5, 10, and nozzle gas 5, 10. These are the parametric studies we have done. And from there, basically, uh, basically we got some Important information about the maximum concentrations in the particle concentration. So, this is video, of course, I think it's not working. Uh, we'll remove that. Then, uh, powder flow simulations uh, on particle uh, representative to velocity. We try to get that how these particles move and flow, and based on that. In person, we moved on for getting information for developing the system. Then another part came the investigation of laser material uh, interactions. Uh, it was required to understand that uh, how much beam size, because these all are required for developing the developing the systems, developing the nozzle. So we again use the continuity equations, momentum equations, and all these things. Those who are in uh, CFD will understand more better. It's a Reynolds stress and wide source fixing on the instance and response due to the conveyor transformations. All these things have been utilized here. And of course, and these are the equations. I'm not going much uh, detail of that. Uh, then uh, common equation for the K epsilon model. And this is the model constraints and details are given. Reynolds, uh, the turbulent heat flux, then uh, turbulent lipid activities are there. I'm just skipping because this is something which is important is the simulation of the velocity vector. Now, getting this velocity vector and scanning direction based on the scanning direction was something which we are looking for. And also, distance in the Z directions. How, how is the maximum vectors we can get it? Then similarly, similarly the, the total information we try to get this from the simulation is to, to incorporate in the design. Basically, essentially, all this information were uh, required for developing the nozzle. Then temperature contours we came. Uh, into the development here by, by simulations. By this here, we got this contour. So scan, it is basically the distance along the x direction and distance along the z direction. You can see it here. 
and this is the scanning direction. So from there, we are trying to get some kind of information of the temperature contours. And this is the simulation part. So, so what are the major findings uh, was that the velocity, temperature, and concentration distributions was obtained by this simulation method. And we got some kind of information about the dimension of the net code, and which was uh, useful for our nozzle uh, uh, design. Then third information we got it is that uh, the correlation among the laser power, uh, scanning speed, and powder fit rate. Because these are the informations were required, and with that, with that we gone on final uh, simulations with little modified powder flow models, and by which we got some of these uh, critical informations. Like of course here, uh, argon gas was used, and surface injection method of particle was considered, and by this method we got this. This is the distance from nozzle tip to information of there 10 millimeter pm 14 16 and 18 and by using this power concentration details we have gone for the simulations and then finally the hot simulation results actually useful we came out so by one of the thing came that by contours of temperature solid uh, liquid interface, we found that our power requirement 800 watt is quite sufficient. Then uh, came this standard distance from 10 to 8, uh, 14 millimeter for selected range of process parameters. And then powder flow carrier and rate of standard of distance details we got. Then also we got uh, some melt modic predicts diameter equal to the diameter of the elected detail. So these are the information which are very critical, crucial for us. Then uh, powder concentration is as high as can be obtained, up to 19 kg per meter cube is possible. Then four region of power concentrations of, can be obtained at the range of something like a 1.1 millimeter. And of course that we have found the 800 and scanning that bit optimal is scanning that in 8 meter per second. So this is the some findings like useful finding for design uh, inputs for the total uh, for system design. Now came to once we have developed the systems, now came to the uh, control systems. And we use very simple uh, control systems, not very complicated one. So first we worked on the XYZ of course, then laser displacement sensor was used here. And then of course the imaging systems were came. So laser controller and laser control signal and five axis motion control. So this is the fairly simple basic development systems we have utilized that. And now in case of the uh, single motor, like what we did here, we, uh, we use this communication purpose, the USB connections we use. We use basically Delta Tau image systems and then hardware embedded. You can see it here. This is of course the first prototype. We have better changed this. Uh, so we use this uh, bushless motor and then driver and to this is the total control system we have worked for the first prototype uh, when the first trial was done initially, not uh, now, now some modifications have been done. Now, as you can see it here, that uh, the velocity command, then we have modified a little bit. So we came to the uh, open architecture control, we finally selected. Uh, reason is that uh, the pros you to go for delta tau, other than delta tau, it's not very open, so we have less flexibility to modify within the uh, controller. So that forces us to go for the open architecture controller. And initially, although we have started with the standard controller, and that has a limited range. And major problem that we face is here is that since that controller is designed for the machining purpose, most of this controller, so any modifications are required that cannot be taken care like in case of uh, in case of the uh, basically at the end when tools goes at the end 
they are basically at the cutting, but it slows down. The profile says slows down, but in case of metal directing, it will be otherwise. So that requires an interfacing of the third party motor amplifier coder was done in modulating and full digital servo control which are used. And of course, PLC programming by IO control system are done. And custom develop some programs we have done through the standard sales code and expression. So you can see the top stage, J and B S S stage is there. And this is the bottom X, Y, and C stage over there. And of course, we use this uh, USB, there is a USB connection between this controller and this is the amplifier. You can see controller plus amplifier was there. Now, this is the overall uh, control structures uh, to just uh, show it in a little uh, different way. So, it is a laser controller, laser system over there. Then there is a powder feeder controller and powder delivery systems. Then temperature height was there, and there is a vision through that. So, this is the proposed uh, plan was there for the deposition of the meter. And of course, top will be there will be the monitoring, diagnostic, and supervising control. So there are master controller will be there, and there will be slave controller to control the part. And another thing, since uh, we have not used the commercial systems, rather we have used the developed uh, CNC code to that. So for that purpose, uh, we use the direct slice data, direct slice data in the motion controller, and that get the direct motion. So now technical issues, uh, what are the technical issues that are faced here? One of the major problem that uh, we started finding is that amplifier need energy and run the signal separately while controller controls only one enable signals. That is the standard problem. So build a separate PLG logic to issue the run command before executing the application. So we have done that. Then another technical issue that we face in controller is that we need additional safety feature for jet tilt and linear axis. So additional electronic brake for vertical axis was added. And then uh, all the axis configuration over the over time software limit was added in addition to hardware limit. So hardware limit switch cannot take care. So there's an added, added layer of safety was added. Then another problem was the sudden jump during the deceleration. So extra dynamic braking extra was added. Because that was the another issue was there. The physical limit and home switch uh, uh, having the different logic levels, no and C. So what we've done is the develop relay square to, to bring the unified logic. Then physical switches unable to delay drive these uh, relay switches. That was the another issue was there. Then identified issue and develop the separate basically transistor different relay circuit with inverted logic was used. Then Another problem that uh, major we faced is the motor amplifier encoders are from the different manufacturers. Once we take this from the different manufacturer, so issue remains that the how to tune how to uh, tune that different systems into one. So immense tuning and phase process to limit the tracking error of better dynamic accuracy. So we want the dynamic capacity less than five meter. The full five microns at the full speed. So these are the challenges actually was associated with the controller. So we have rectified that. Then, then we came to the integrating of the uh, in-house developed software. Of course, here majority of what was done at IIT Kharagpur. Uh, so the issue was that. Uh, the deposited materials, as you know, this is the standard problems. Is a dimensional accuracy, surface finish, and metallurgical quality was there. So our challenge was that we should have the accuracy something like 100 micron, 150 micron, and surface finish something 50 micron, and minimum feature size 500 micron. So that was the so. But if you go, as you know already, uh, the commercial softwares. If you go for the STL slicing, the STL slicing, there will be slice thickness kind of things. And the, that will, these are the stepping, staircasing errors will be there. So to avoid the staircasing errors, so we use the, okay, I'll just move. 
long drive. So we use this uh, uh, develop system. It is a develop on MATLAB. So you know this is the CAD model, the CAD model in STL format. So in this CAD model, we require have the outer loop on vertex and end loop. Basically, we require uh, generally in STL file store the three vertices and one normal. So on the, that is the standard thing. Now, now what we did here is that to avoid the errors from the targeted mesh approximations, targeted mesh approximation, as you can see, this is the error due to the triangulations. We have gone for the direct slicing of the CAD models. And uh, that is done. That is so, we, what we did, this, you can see the solid blocks model. And instead of going for the uh, direct using, when using the uh, STL file, we use the direct slicing. So modeling software can be done uh, many, many, soft, many uh, mathematical equations, as you know. So I'm just giving little bit details. Like one of the earliest form of modeling software, modeling surface was used the Bezier surface. Then we came to the B splice, which is more complex. Then came to uh, Nars surface, which is called non-rational uniform, non-uniform rational B splice. This it is currently being used. Now, what we did uh, here is that uh, is that we have taken that direct slice part, slicing over the CAD model, and then CAD model has been directly utilized in the system. CAD model utilized the system. <coughs> We utilize the system, and then, as you can see, uh, when you can see this. This is the final form of our design and manufacturing logic. You can see it the uh, full picture of that. Now, what we did here is that laser source. We did it uh, synchronized through software. Stand alone by standalone continuum and continuing through signal for motion continuum. And laser all of continuous synchronized we have done through PLC. Independent feeder control was there. This is the synchronizing things we have done it through uh, motion control. And this is finally the uh, additive systems we have come across, come to current form, and it has been used for different. R&D purpose, and you can see it here. So this is the final specification we got it in our DD systems. So as already I have told, so we are very close to I think time is limit. And these are the geometric features we have developed out of the systems by STL ST. And we got some kind of good capture efficiencies out of that. And you can see very good surface finish by using the parametric studies we got that.
And now we have moved to developing the single pistol using this system. So one is single pistol A. And this is basically to target the uh, turbine blade, aerospace turbine blade. And second is the phase control in IT manufacturing, especially to control the microstructures. So these are the new activities that have been done in same systems. And now finally acknowledgement. It was done under the project uh, funded by DST. One of the major contributors of this project was Dr. A.P. Lohar, then Dr. Sudip Savant, Dr. Dada. These are the project team, actually, from the DST funded project. It has 4.7 uh, million crore was there finally. I had the Kharagpur, Osibawar, I Chaudhary, and Chandran Mondal. So this is the project uh, built. We have to build the systems, and then now it's being used for different projects. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Murmu. I was I got amazed seeing uh, the you know the the model, the the equipment that you have developed, considering all the features, starting from the design features, the numerical modeling, simulation, modal analysis, and finally achieving to the the level of accuracy. And I must have, I can I can feel that uh, the the level of satisfaction that you had. Yeah, and you and your team, when you saw that the system, the equipment is, you know, the working, that's a wonderful thing. And uh, so the, the dimension of the table, if I'm not wrong, it's a 300 cross 300, isn't it? 300 by 300. 300 by 300. So it's pretty big, you know. It's big. big. Uh, now for aerospace, we require a little bigger size. Now actually our major problem is coming that we need to enhance the size of the uh, bed size of the bed to accommodate the aerospace component. Now, we are finding this lot of scopes from aerospace. The reason is that they have a lot of exhaustive materials, especially the incoherent and also some high energy alloys they want to productively develop, especially for turbine uh, engine components. So there, the systems have to be helpful in the sense that we can utilize the system and modify whatever you require. And we are modified, in fact, uh, Dr. Lohan is working on that and he has modified the for the single system purpose. We are experimenting still, uh, waiting for some results, good results out of that. I mean, uh, you mentioned about the turbine blade. Is it, isn't it the printing the turbine blade or is a component of the turbine that we are printing? No, our target is to uh, repair that. Repair, yeah. Target is to repair that. Targets to repair. Our main target is to repair, and uh, we should have flexibility to change. Another things uh, we are trying to work with the NML in Jamshedpur is that they got some very good uh, facility. They are getting very good facility on powder development. And what we are trying to experiment with them is that to get uh, different exhaustive material. These are novel materials for the purpose of. Uh, Additive manufacturing purpose, tailor-made for additive manufacturing. So, how difficult it would be? Like, uh, what is the what are the problems you are uh, you know you may be facing? Like, when upscaling for a larger uh, you know job printing, you'd like to scale up your system from uh, three hundred cost three hundred to a larger thing. What sort of problems do you? The main problem is that there is a two issues. One major issue is that if you are using the standard items, that will work limited range, it will work fine. So it is more trouble free. But if you want flexibility, then you have to take for the open architecture model, control systems. There you have to write in each and everything. Like we have a lot of problem difficulties to integrating the software, matter software with the controller. So that requires another level of writing the interface. So it is not uh, making that user inter user friendly is another challenge. Yes, yes. Getting so the this open is the problem we faced in that thesis. Getting the open architecture for the control. If you go for open architecture, then uh, your things are not very. Well, you have to be particular each and every test. Your, your system has to pass through each and every test. But if you go for standard CNC machine, then you will not get the desired microstructure, desired build, because of the kind of uh, inbuilt systems are there. 
can't so this way you have gone for the open architecture and it worked it won't try some questions are there so i'll just yeah. read so uh, did you uh, uh, what is your suggestions like the metallurgical evaluation and the effect of uh, the cooling and solidification rates when the metal is getting decoded so did you can you study on that from your when the material is getting printed no that has been done that work has been done that is within the permissible range we got almost a parent materials there is a comparison to i didn't have the slide here but they have compared this with the parent material and depositing material especially the stainless steel parent material and deposit we have extensively done this for the parent material and deposit material and we got the same strength even we have some places we have uh, we have broken that part and added the materials and try to see that materials how materials are particles we got almost a good it's even good surface things even it is comparable to the commercial even better than the commercial it's not very it's not the uh, right to do that but it is very comparable to the commercial system available by the farm so what sort of metals you have printed by using this facility well we mostly focused it. this is the initial work we have done now we have gone for the other kind of things that results are okay but here no what done is mostly the stainless steel okay. you see that uh, all kind of properties and how things are behaving because our system has to be tuned so we focused on that now so we have many experiments have been done so that is the uh, different uh, activities have done been done different purpose but to so did you check the system we have focused only the stainless steel but did you check the different uh, you know the powder particles like the the metal particles of the stainless steel and all yeah the no we have used the standard we have not gone to that we didn't use that we are supposed to get this uh, from rci so that actually we didn't uh, uh, get that finally uh, from padanam and dr padanam has suggested that you will develop such a uh in our uh, this thing in our uh, powder we actually very curious to see that how in our develop powder will work uh, but it's really amazing work some questions are also there in the chat box like uh, could you please let us know the which motion control card you have used in the plc for the integration of the cnc stage and whether you are able to tap the real time behavior of the servo motor from real time we have i am not a great exact remember but we are able to done probably real time it is done almost a five five years three years back so so i am not able to remember exact name of this card but we are able to do it real time it is fully real time even real time simulation our cutting was done in real time and uh, in fact the slicing was done in real time and that is it directly on the controller so from computer to the printing was a real time but how far it is from the you know the to make it commercialized so did you approach any any of the the, the industries or or the industries came no, forward industry we have approach a lot but uh, thing is that uh, we estimated the cost whatever possible cost cannot be reduced below something 1.5 crore for commercial cost so it requires little more uh little more proactive from the different big companies so okay. another thing is that uh, they are more interested to get the direct develop system proven system rather than working on the design system there are very few uh, you know the very, i think very less uh, in the machine manufacturer in india so in that way so your other uh, system your team's effort and all this really uh, no jyoti cnc was interested but they told that please develop first then but after developing also they required a lot of push from other side yeah some questions are also there in the chat box let me, uh, let me read uh, the master controller is used for monitoring controlling and supervision so please uh, please let us know uh, what are the features getting monitored and controlled is there any system for monitoring the deposited layer width height and distortion so yeah. when... okay I mean, mostly this we have that whatever we have shown it here 
we are mostly focused on the high quantity by laser sensor. Now, the latest systems we are working in that there will be even uh, trying to control the microstructure itself. So, that is not being done. But right now, what we have shown it here is a high control can be done. After that, we have implemented in that system. And now, what is being done is that how to control the microstructure itself. So, it still requires some time to get back to the particular system. Okay. So, uh, another question is there from Mr. Sandeep Kumar Parali. Is there any other post processing? No. We have not done any post processing. We have directly taken the slice. That was the challenge. When you are using the uh, UMED systems and you have to take the code from the MATLAB. MATLAB means you are getting the basically slice, the direct slicing was done. So we are getting the nerve, nerve surface, nerve surface to nerve card. That nerve card has been discretized and that data has been fed into the controls. So that was the that was a complicated part, but that was the things we have implemented here. Yeah, one question is that which motion card is used in the CNC state? It was a Parker one. No, you made motion card was you made you made you made the Delta Tower. Uh, I think this question has already been answered. Why do you select the granite base? This you have already mentioned. No, it is a deformation, of course. Basically, this kind of thing. So, <laughs> mostly the deformation will be totally quite less. And, but only issue is there. Still, again, we, what we face the issue is that that manufacturing capability of Indian manufacturers they cannot manufacture such a level. So you have to get it manufactured from abroad. That's the major issue. But did you do that for your uh, the the machine? No, we have done that from, uh, got the system from Korea, South Korea. So, uh, another question is that, can you please comment on the status of growing the single crystals without super alloy, fan blade, or something like that? Uh, status is being done. It is in female uh, state. We got some good encouraging results and there is a certain system issues. We are trying to address. Let me, let us see, because it is a very primary stage and we have started that one. And it has been done by another colleague, this is Dr. Lohar, he is working on that. It is very primary stage, but it is working. Yeah, so Professor Kshriyansh Kumar is very happy to see that uh, your progress uh, since 2015, when he last reviewed the project. Yeah, thank that. you, Professor Kumar. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> <laughs> he was the uh, <laughs> member from monitoring committee from DST. Okay. No, but you see the, the ecosystem, what I'd like to yeah. uh, stress upon the, the ecosystem is so good. Uh, the yeah. Kar IIT Karakpur and then CSS, CMA, Dugapur. So if we work together, uh, then, then a lot of things can happen. No, in so, fact, I, I okay. thank, uh, thank Professor Kumar because he has given very good couple of sizes which we implemented finally. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was a good sizes in system level. So uh, do note that single crystals is hard to achieve in uh, it's such a setup, but it will be interesting to know how will you get the crystal growth controlled, and also if you have made the real 3D parts with varying dimensions in all directions. What is the minimal feature size in 3D you have achieved in your with the current setup? That's the question. No, it is very right now. It is very small size. It is a very small size. Basically, controlling the keeping the isothermal temperature temperature isothermal is a good things and I think it's better if you can, there is another guy, Dr. Lohar is also there here. He is the, he is the PI of the project, he can better tell, he is the expert on that area. Yeah, we will also yeah. listen to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, he is uh, doing that but still in female states. So, uh, let me read the question that uh, Ipsita Mohanty has placed. That does the system accommodates deposition of FGMs? But you yeah. can use two or more powder systems of composition. Yeah. Two systems you can be deposited. Even we have deposited some later, some of the students are working, they're deposited in different states, soft state. I think uh, two of the two of your members are already there, uh, Dr. Naga Honumaya and Dr. Uh, you know the Adito Lohar. 
So I'm, request, I'm requesting the uh, the Ananta or Prabhanjan, please give them the uh, the the access so that they can also contribute. They can also speak. So it's a very good interaction. So let us hear from them as well if they want to say something. Ananta, please, can you give them the uh, the access for speaking? Uh, yeah, they can unmute, sir. Yeah. So, uh, Doctor Loa, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 we can hear you very well. Yeah. Would you like to can say you, something? Can you say something about the Just uh, started. Hello. Yes, I think there is some audio problem, maybe. Think some audio problem is that. So, meanwhile, let, let me uh, hear from Dr. Naga Hunumanaya. Dr. Naga, are you there? Ananta, can you give the access? Dr. Naga? Yes, uh, give him, sir. Hello? Yeah, 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 we can get him. Yeah. I'm sorry, I joined a little late. Uh... No, no, it's it's okay. Yeah. So, uh, would you like to say something about this work? Because you have also one of the uh, the, uh, the inventors. Yeah, of course. Uh, my association was at early stage. Uh, what is done, of course, uh, till 2018. After 18, I'm not aware. You know the more details. Uh, yes, the system is integrated. There were some limitations with respect to uh, CAD processing, data, CAD data processing. Uh, building a conformal geometry was an issue. Otherwise, the deposition process was, uh, I think, very well demonstrated. I think one question you were asking to Dr. Murumo that is uh, regarding commercialization. Yes, yes. I can't uh, directly comment on this system, but yes, since CMT now. As a director, I'm trying to push the Indian developed technology to the industry. Particularly for additive manufacturing machine, we are also building the deposition machine. Same uh, direct deposition machine, but it is for a larger built volume. 1200 by 1000 by 500. But the challenge now is, uh, is big for aerospace applications. Maybe within a year, our system will be ready. But here the challenge is the subsystems. Because in Indian company, if you want to commercialize, so the major bottleneck right now for the particularly the energy assisted deposition is the laser source. So still we don't have a laser built on in India, the toy power laser laser. Um, now, of course, uh, we are talking to CCRI and also we are talking to some private company to indigenize this laser system. So if this laser system is ready, I think our system will be ready with 100% Indian content. I think they reduce the cost drastically. Because right now, whatever the laser system which we used in CMRA setup, uh, that was bought out system, uh, which has its own limitations, particularly when you're talking to inter integrating as a kind of synchronized controller. So that is very difficult. And also another system, particularly for the deposition process is the feeder, powder feeder. Again, powder feeder and optics is another issue. Uh, that is also, sub, that system, CMT, we are developing ourselves. I think uh, possibly the demonstration, the process is already demonstrated. I think it is now many groups in India, they worked on different aspects of uh, deposition process. But engineering of a system, definitely engineering of a system will be accepted in India when we have cost effective solution. It will never be a cost effective unless we have a subsystems developed within the country. Exactly. Rest all it is easy because of the kind of IIoT and all uh, expertise which you have at VCMT, I have other uh, summer center, I have even including CMRA as an AI center. I think uh, making this system little kind of a closed loop system that should not be a problem. The problem is 
the three major subsystem i think we need to indigenize one is laser system order feeder then the optical system i think if it is done uh, this uh, particularly the deployment based uh, dt manufacturing machine is going to be a, definitely industry indian industry will come forward till then i think uh, this is not a kind of a, still not a industrially acceptable technology particularly in terms of cost that is why expanding yeah. yes. here actually laser system what uh, there is another project we are proposing where the cdcr is giving the laser system 600 watt 600 watt they have uh, almost uh, developed that so, so that need to uh, because we found we found that 600 also is sufficient to more the majority time we have uh, deposited these things less than 600 yeah yeah that is true that is true so 600 700 would be good but in this project limited capacity is yeah. right but Dr. Naga, I mean, Dr. Murbu, there are, I mean, quite a few uh, laser, you know, the manufacturing industries in our country. The Sure Sindhu laser, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not very much confident on that. I'm just hard. So, is that not possible to get those things done from the, the local vendors and all? No, no, at least we are in touch with three companies, three people, but still none is uh, assured that they will supply the laser because we are looking for one kilowatt. But still is not assured. One kilowatt earlier I have to go. We are working with some company because of the confidentiality I cannot disclose. Uh, we are trying to develop a customized uh, this one. So, uh, other I mean with general addition, of course, we with the CGCRA also we are working. So say uh, CGCRA are able to develop because they developed up to I think 200 watts something, which was supplied to ARCI. So now I, we are looking for uh, another development through that. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Lohar, uh, can you uh, can you speak now? Is that audio problem solved, resolved? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Would you like to make any comment? Any, uh, uh, regarding not... single crystal, we have started uh, recently, not uh, we, uh, we have uh, done much work Still, uh, we are our plan is to install a induction heating system so that uh, each layer when it will be printed will be will not allow to solidify. And uh, the induction heating system will be installed in Z axis, and it will be it will be slowly uh, uh, move upward. With the dead axis, so that the new crystal does not neglect. Stray crystal exactly does not neglect. That is the our process. What we are going to follow it regarding single crystal printing, and that is the uh, one single crystal turbine blade uh, is cost around seventy five lakhs. So, two to three millimeter tip, if we can repair, it will save a lot of cost of the uh, aerospace industry. That was uh, our target. Good, excellent, excellent. So, I think uh, we have interacted for a long time. Let us stop here. Uh, it's already uh, you know, 9 38. Uh, so, for Dr. Murbo, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, lecture and uh, I must appreciate the effort you and your team members, Dr. Naga, Dr. Uh, you know, Lohar and others have put in, in coming up with this stage is really wonderful, excellent. Yeah, and uh, we look forward to more and more success from your uh, yeah. team. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation and uh, we look forward to have this sort of interactions uh, you know more number of interactions in future thank you so much i'm requesting now ananta to let us know the the speakers for the next uh these Sarah days ananta could you please let us know Okay, so thank you once again, uh, Dr. Moore. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be with you.
Oh, there is an announcement that uh, Center of Excellence in Advanced Manufacturing yes, Technology is coming up with the uh, six days training program on industrial robotics. This is the first time we are coming up with this training and we understand that uh, at the era of Industry 4.0, there are a lot of demands on the the, the robots at the, so the to train the industry people and also to the, train the students. We have come up with this training program. It will be floated from January 17 to January 22nd. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the seats are very, very limited and uh, the, the registration fee is also very much affordable as compared to other. Yeah, so on and go, go to the next. Uh, yeah, the speakers are uh, Professor John Norris uh, on the next week, next Saturday. Uh, we'll be talking about the recent advances in the gas shielded arc welding. Followed by that, there will be a lecture on the robotics and artificial intelligence by Professor Girish Choudhury from University of Illinois Urbana Sampan. And then uh, Dr. George Vanderburg, Metallocopy Practices in Welding. With this, I'd like to close uh, today's session. Thank you so much. Thank you.